Hello, Medelity here, and here is another review. This time on Arcade Paradise, a game developed by Nosebleed Interactive. This is by far one of the best job simulation genre games I've played, and I do play a lot of them. I really do like this job simulation game genre. I've played Gas Station Simulator, I've played Drug Dealer Simulator, I've played Basement, and the list kind of just keeps going on with these types of, you know, food truck simulator esque. You want to play in the shoes of somebody who is working, but not actually working because that's not fun, right? So with this game, I have to say I had an incredible time. The story is simple and not complex, and it really helps you motivate you through the feedback loop of slowly converting this laundromat the main character Ashley Goldman got from her father into an arcade paradise. All I have to say is that I was very much surprised at how they were able to flip and add features to games that are iconic like Pac-Man and Space Invaders and make them more interesting and more modern. For example, they have a game called Race Chaser or Space Chaser. I'm pretty sure it's Race Chaser, which is like a GTA Pac-Man fusion where it's a Pac-Man game, but when your car crashes, you can actually fight back with a boombox to basically stun cops to run to another vehicle to then keep going. And you could do this basically forever if you're very good at the game. It very much gives you a new skill to refine and master in the Pac-Man genre, which I didn't really think could be done. And they do this for a lot of the games that you're actually playing in Arcade Paradise. On top of that, there's emails in your 1990s 98 Windows computer where you're emailing people that like your arcade and are beating you in high scores. And the more that you beat them, the more story you get while also getting them to get their friends to play that arcade cabinet, resulting in a score system called popularity that each arcade cabinet has where the more popular something is, the more money it has. There's also a hot swapping feature where basically you order an arcade cabinet, you can hot swap them anytime for games that let's say you don't like, you can put them near the games you do like so that you don't need to play them necessarily as much to get a lot of money from them. And this kind of keeps going on with more efficiency routes like upgrades using a different type of currency. There being two currencies, USD and the pound sterling. USD is for construction of converting the laundromat more into an arcade and buying more arcade cabinets, while pounds is for upgrades and discs to buy for your jukebox. The jukebox is fantastic. It basically mutes all the music that is playing in the games for the arcade cabinets when you're playing them so you can kind of have a new soundtrack to all these different games. And on top of that, you can buy new discs for this jukebox. All of the songs that are on this jukebox are 1990s inspired. Even the album covers remind you of, let's say, Pretty Hurt Machine from Nine Inch Nails and Pearl Jam. When it comes to just finding a good song, it is relatively easy. I was quite surprised actually that the original music or the music that they got for the game was this good. I actually was listening to it not to increase the goals of the jukebox, which is what all arcade machines have, where you basically beat an achievement for this type of game or cabinet, and it results in increasing that popularity score that I was talking about. But the music was just, actually, I would listen to it with the game not playing. I do like a lot of music soundtracks for video games, but this is more than that. This is just straight up really good music selected for this jukebox and for this game. On top of that, the main character's father is voice acted by Geralt of Rivia. Yeah, pretty insane. I was completely stumped for a long time until I realized, hey, wait a minute, that's, that's Geralt. And I checked it and I can confirm it is 100% the VA for Geralt of Rivia and for the dad to Ashley Goldman. Now, when it comes to this really good feedback loop of you get a new arcade cabinet, you make money from it from the hoppers, and the more achievements you do for it gives it even more money for the next time. I just have to say that the only problem I had is cleaning up trash, okay? Basically, when you're at the laundromat, you have a bunch of these mini games that you have to kind of manage. One is like unclogging the toilet, another one is picking up trash and throwing it perfectly in the garage bin for some cash, or ripping gum off of tables. But when it comes to just picking up the simple trash, the detection of the hitback hitbox or whatever to interact to actually pick up was completely annoying and just non-existent it felt like for some of them some of them was literally impossible to pick up which is just so annoying when you're trying to perfect your cleanliness score which can go up to about 
25% on all of your arcade cabinets, boosting their profits by literally a quarter if you can properly clean everything every day when it becomes dirty, when you leave, come back. But with that and the con, I am still giving this a nine and a half out of 10. It is really, really good. I got 22 hours out of this game. It is way, way over what I would say like price per hour of gameplay that I used to use. It is worth your while to play if you really like these simulation games. But if you don't, I won't recommend it because first off, how about you play games you actually enjoy? And I'd rather recommend them to people that would actually enjoy them maybe right it's not something to you know make you completely love simulation games and hate rpgs or think that they are on the same equal footing but if you like this type of genre in gaming the job simulator x genre of games then i think you're going to enjoy arcade paradise so with that i hope you sleep well i hope you get good rest and i hope to see you in the next video Bye bye